there are compromises that are possible. And I suggested some compromises to my friend, Benjamin Netanyahu, when I met with him. And that is cutting the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court over political and economic issues, but maintaining its ability to have the last word on fundamental issues of equality and justice and, and due process. And welcome back to the Rosenberg Report as we now examine the other side of Israel's war over judicial reform. All Israel News senior correspondent Tal Heinrich, who also produces the Rosenberg Report, continues with an exclusive interview with Professor Alan Dershowitz, a leading American expert on constitutional law who recently flew here to Israel to meet personally with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. His message to Bibi, change course. Your legal reforms aren't just flawed, they're dangerous. I know that you've been quite vocal against this reform. Can you tell us why? The right wing is not looking for reform. They're looking to basically weaken the Supreme Court considerably. It will make it much harder for people like me to defend Israel in international courts like the International Court of Justice. The Supreme Court has really been Israel's legal iron dome. Dershowitz believes that the course Netanyahu and his allies are pursuing is, quote, a grave mistake. He wants to achieve an appropriate balance between democracy and elitism. And that's a fair issue to raise. But I think the balance is fairly appropriate now. And I think that this series of reforms would would strike the balance very much against human rights, civil liberties and minority rights, which are essential to having a country like Israel, uh, which uh, is a, a, a democracy and, and a democracy that believes in liberty and equality. It's an argument that the president of Israel's Supreme Court, Esther Hayut, is also making. Ironically, the masterminds of the program call it a program to fix the judicial system, and I say it's a program to crush the judicial system. Opponents fear Netanyahu's reforms will remove protections from minorities who will find themselves subject to the will of the majority. When it comes to basic issues of equality, of due process, of free speech, um, those should not be able to be overridden. Those are fundamental rights. I'll give you an example. One of the people on the right of the Israeli government wants to have different rules uh, involving the ability to shoot rock throwers, uh, depending on whether the rock thrower is an Arab or a Jew. Now, any decent court would strike that down as illegal. But, you know, you have the counter argument which states that for the very same reason that Israel does not have a constitution based on which Supreme Court justices in the country uh, can provide their rulings, then they often tend to uh, rule in a way that reflects their political agenda, take an interventionist and activist approach to cases that would have been otherwise left to a political discussion that could have been maybe resolved through a compromise. Uh, is that so? Well, I think there are compromises that are possible. And I suggested some compromises to my friend, Benjamin Netanyahu, when I met with him. And that is cutting the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court over political and economic issues, but maintaining its ability to have the last word on fundamental issues of equality and justice and, and due process. Another critical reform Netanyahu proposes is changing the selection process by which Supreme Court judges are selected. Unlike in the United States, judges in Israel are not nominated by a president and confirmed by democratically elected senators. Rather, Israeli nominees have to get the approval of a selection committee, where judges already serving on the Supreme Court have the power to veto their appointment. Members of the Knesset have little say in the process. I asked Professor Dorchowitz about this. It's as if Elena Kagan could have vetoed the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh or uh, Justice Alito could have vetoed, theoretically, the, the nomination of, of um, Katanji Brown-Jackson. Isn't it absurd? But instead, what we saw is the Republicans vetoing mm -hmm. the nomination of Merrick Garland. Of course, under the Israeli judicial system, no judge can veto the nomination. Um, you have to have four votes to veto the nomination, and they don't have four votes to veto the nomination. Um, look. I wish if I were writing the Constitution of the United States, I would have required a two-thirds vote of the Senate for confirmation. So we don't get extremists. We get bipartisan uh, justices. Ask almost any right-wing voter in Israel, and the majority of Israelis are right-wing, and they will tell you that appointing a non-liberal judge to the country's highest court is like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It's almost impossible to do. 
That said, Dershowitz doesn't believe the public is necessarily supposed to be happy with what the high court decides. Every democratic country has a conflict between an elite court, and courts are not supposed to be reflective of the popular will. They're supposed to be checks on democracy, not part of democracy. Democracy! Yeah. The reason I feel that the only reason for this new so-called revolution uh, is to save only one person. The aim is to save only one person and one only. This is Mr. Netanyahu and his a trial, and that's why I'm here demonstrating against it. In Israel, people who oppose the judicial reform usually come from the political left. The same people who hope that Netanyahu's ongoing trial on corruption charges will end with his conviction. Israelis on the right, however, believe that the trial itself reveals the corruption of the legal system, not of Netanyahu. And they're furious that unelected activist prosecutors and unelected activist judges are systematically trying to destroy the leader of the right wing, who has been democratically elected more than any other prime minister in Israel's modern history. But to be clear, Dershowitz does not fit either of these profiles. Although he objects Netanyahu's judicial reforms, he thinks that Netanyahu's trial raises grave dangers to democracy and the rule of law. I'm a principled person rather than a partisan person. I have the same thing in the United States. I vote against Trump and I defend his right. Um, so I'm constantly a, being perceived as on being on different sides of the same issue. I'm not. It's always a principled argument. It's a complicated and messy battle, one that threatens to get even messier if it creates a rupture between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu and a crisis in the U.S.-Israel relations. For now, I'm Tal Heinrich in New York for the Rosenberg Report. Thanks, Tal. Great report on a fierce, complicated, but fascinating debate. All Israel News is now reporting that various lawmakers are quietly discussing a possible compromise, perhaps with the mediation of Israeli President Isaac Herzog, a calm and widely trusted voice. Stay tuned to All Israel News and the Rosenberg Report for updates on this ongoing story. It's one that we're tracking closely.